Hello again. In the last video, we saw about the document hierarchy and we divided the hierarchy into three levels. Level 1, the policy documents for establishing a QMS, level 2 for implementing and level 3 for maintaining. In this video, we will look at the level 1 documents for establishing a documented QMS. Policies. So, what are policies for establishing a quick QMS? And you would want to answer four questions initially before we get into it. We need to know what are QMS policies? How do you create policy documents? How do you maintain the policy documents? And how do you retain the policy documents? We will just answer the first two questions in this video and deal with the others in, in later videos. And First question, what are QMS policies? We already talked about it, but again to recap, it is a framework for the institution's quality system. Broad general directions or guidance on what to do. States organizational missions, goals and purposes. Each lab develops its own policies in compliance with the standard it is following and in this case the ISO standard. So, let us see the pyramid again and these are the documents that we are going to talk about in this video and let us split it up. Take the apex documents once again in one go like I am going to take this part I am chopping it here so that we understand the details of the documentation requirements in the policy documents. So, I have again divided it into three layers here. Again, this is only for your understanding. It is not the final standard uh, for dividing documentation. I am putting the, at the apex the quality policy. In the second layer, the quality objectives and quality indicators and the quality manual. And all these documents are used for planning. So, why is it that this is a little out of the alignment? It is because quality objectives are for monitoring and continual improvement mechanisms. They are very much part of the planning, but they are also said in different parts of the standard. We will see that later and why I have put it in, in misalignment purposely and uh, we will understand the details of it as we see this video further. So, first we will start with the quality policy, the first part of the first part of the pyramid ok. We have we took one pyramid, we cut off the first part and then that again we subdivided into three and the quality policy forms the first part of the this first apex of the pyramid. So, to know more about quality policy, what is quality policy? It is an agreement, a, pol a promise, a mission statement, a commitment of the top management very important top management to establish, implement and maintain a QMS. Here the top management is saying we understand about the need for a quality management system because labs are places with multiple activities to hold it together we need a quality management system and therefore we are in agreement that it should be done and they are stating that through a policy the apex agreement of a laboratory quality management system. This uh, the quality policy has to be signed by the highest authority in the institution because it is not the complete requirement, I mean it cannot be met by the technical people alone, it has to be signed out by the, the highest authority in the case of a district hospital possibly by the medical superintendent or in a medical college maybe the principal, the dean, MS or anybody who has the authority to make that statement I agree that there should be a quality management system and I am going to provide you all the resources, all the management requirements will be met. That is what they are saying through the quality policy. So, what is ISO? Where in the ISO standard do you read about the quality policy? This is a standard clause number. 4.1.2.3. We already know that 4, 4 clause 4 is for management requirements and is a statement of the management and in 4.1.2.3 the laboratory management shall define the intent of its quality management system in a quality policy. The laboratory management shall ensure that the quality policy 
is appropriate. There are five conditions here that about the quality policy. It is appropriate for the function purpose of the organization. It includes a commitment to good professional practice, examinations that are fit for intended use, compliance with the requirements of this international standard and continual improvement of the quality of laboratory services. Third is that it provides a framework for establishing and reviewing quality objectives. Again, we have to understand this statement further. We will do that in the subsequent slides. And that the quality policy is communicated and understood within the organization. It is reviewed for continuing suitability. So there are five conditions the quality policy has to state which requires the, the signature and of the authorization by the highest authority in the institution. Let us look at a sample quality policy. We have said there are five things that need to be stated by the, the top management. So this is a sample and this XYZ lab is committed to providing reliable, accurate, easily accessible laboratory services to all the users in the fields of chem biochemistry, pathology, which, whichever that you would want to bring under the scope of the quality management system. So if you look at the previous slide, what is this appropriate for the function purpose of the organization? So that is illustrated in the slide uh, in this statement by it will give reliable, accurate and easily accessible laboratory services. Second, it is what, what does the standard say? Standard says includes a commitment to good professional practice, examinations that are fit for intended use, compliance with the requirement of the standard. So in the, in the quality policy, the laboratory is stating that the XYZ lab is committed to performing lab tests by means of at most competent professional practices and conforming to national international standards. So what is the third one? Third one says provides a framework for establishing and reviewing quality objectives. And in this uh, quality policy, it says XYZ lab is committed to planning, establishing and periodically reviewing quality objectives to meet the requirement of the users in line with the ISO standard for continual improvement. Again back to the standard, it is communicated and understood within the organization. Ensuring XYZ lab is committed to ensuring that the entire lab team is fully familiarized with the quality management system, ultimately focusing on the end user's satisfaction. Back to the standard is reviewed for continuing suitability. Ensuring the XYZ lab is committed to ensuring that this policy will be reviewed periodically to make the necessary changes. So whatever the standard requirement is should be reflected in your quality policy and it should be signed out by the highest authority in your institution. These are the requirements of writing a quality policy that it should be understood, it should be released by the management of the highest authority and it should reflect all the standard, all the requirements that the standard is talking about. And this is, it should be read, understood, followed by all. Very important. Uh, you can see this is a just shows an, an example, an illustrative example that it should be understood by all. In our laboratories, we see that it is framed and hung on the walls of the quality policy. It should be written in the local language also so that people can actually understand what is it, uh, the management is trying to communicate. So that is the ultimate management's commitment to the quality. So we will move on to the next aspect of the APEX documentation which is quality objectives. Quality objectives can be found under clause 4.1.2.4. 4.1.2.4 quality objectives and planning. And this clause says laboratory management shall establish quality objectives including those needed to meet the needs and requirements of the users at relevant functions and levels within the organization. The quality objective shall be measurable and consistent with the quality policy. Do you see the elements under the quality objectives? Relevant functions, relevant levels of the organization should be measurable and consistent with the quality policy. 
Laboratory management shall ensure the planning of the quality management system is carried out to meet the requirements and the quality objectives. So let's understand what are objectives. What do you mean by the word objective? It's a simple English word saying that I have a purpose, I have a goal to meet. So how do you do that? How are quality objectives set? Set by the top management in discussion with the staff involved in the daily activities. So unlike the quality policy, which is a commitment that the management is making uh, by themselves about the requirements, about the meeting a quality management system. Did you, do you remember that slide from before? This is a agreement that the quality, the, the manage, top management is making the top management's prerogative to define the, uh, the, the policy. But when it comes to quality objectives, the, the management will discuss with all the staff involved in the daily activities. It should engage all functions of the lab, should be time bound, should engage all levels of the lab, should be consistent with the quality policy, should be measurable, measured and monitored. Continual improvement should be based on this and is directed at areas of highest priority based on risk assessments. We will look at each of these components separately to understand the different terms. Let us start with what do you mean by levels and functions of the lab? Levels, the management, the technical supervisory staff, frontline workers who might include lab technicians, lab attendants or however your lab is organized housekeeping staff, security, there could be problems at any of these levels which should be taken up as an objective to remedy and rectify to when the lab is working towards total quality improvement. And then the, what are the different functions of the lab? We already know pre-analytical, analytical, post-analytical, post if there are any other things, research, whatever are the functions that you want to focus on, all those should be part of your quality objective setting. Uh, if there are any kinds of problems encountered in any of these areas, they should become objectives. So once again, to recap, quality objectives should be specific, set it different functions of the lab and different levels of the lab as required. They should be measurable, right? They should be measurable. If you cannot measure a thing, you cannot really improve on it. Third, it should be agreed upon. We already looked at that. It should be set in consensus with all the functionaries of the lab at different levels and whoever is really involved in the day-to-day -day activities of the lab. It should be realistic. You, sh you do not send an objective, set an objective which is impossible to achieve. It should be realistic and it should be time bound. This is how you set smart objectives. Make it time bound. Unless you are able to finish the work in t on time, the objectives are set so that it can be achieved and that's why, that's why it should be achievable as well as it should be time bound. So let's look at a little more into quality objectives. Measure it. Make it measurable. Define ways to measure the performance. Set the frequency at which the objectives will be measured. M most labs set quality objectives on an annual basis, but you need to measure it at a more frequent basis, whether, to, whether it is showing improvement, maybe let's say quarterly. And this measurement should be done by the management and the management and technical side should sit together and understand whether there is progress, where you are on the way to achieve your uh, objectives or are you stalling. So that should be understood and also talk about it. The, the result should be communicated to all the staff involved. If an objective is met, the, its credit goes to everyone. If an objective is not met, the responsibility is everyone's to meet the objective. So you have to talk about the objectives. Meetings, departmental meetings, interdepartmental meetings are all extremely important in, in when you are talking about quality objectives. Measure it. I am assuming you know about this character. He is Pinocchio and all of you would have seen comic book with Pinocchio in it. Every time he is a toy, wooden toy made by a carpenter and he comes to life and every time he says a lie, his nose lengthens. So by the length of his nose, you know how much of lie, how many lies he is saying. It is a very theatrical kind of an objective indicator that will indicate to you that the lies are being said. Similarly, objective, losing weight. How will you measure it? 
you will measure it by standing on a scale and figuring out whether you have lost weight. So this is if you have objectives you have to set indicators, we will talk about indicators in a little while and the, all objectives should be measured. So setting quality objective, how you know what are the problems in your lab? Like Unlike in the case of the weight, you have to have mechanisms to understand the bottlenecks of your lab. You have to understand the bottlenecks and then choose those. The resources that can be used to set quality objectives are many. One evaluation, you can see many of those examples under clause 4.14, which is evaluations and audits. In the standard, please check under evaluations and audits and it shows evaluations and audits. It talks about many mechanisms by which you can understand your bottlenecks, customer feedback, staff suggestions, internal audits, risk assessments, quality indicators, external audits, several things. I am adding one more to it by non-conformance event capturing and incident reports. I will talk about it in, a, in the next slide. So these are the mechanisms the standard is suggesting to understand your bottlenecks and those should become your quality objectives. So for instance, an equipment downtime, suppose you, are, you have a problem with equipment, frequent equipment breakdown. So you capture the downtime and see whether it is improving or not improving or it's uh, static. So like this is an, uh, just an example where in February uh, 2016 you had an 8 percent violation and in March it has come down to 3. That is how you capture your quality objectives through indicators. I will talk about it further. This is a risk prioritization, prioritization matrix. You can read more about this in the Labs for Life's QC module volume 1, how to do use a risk prioritization, prioritization matrix to identify the risks in your laboratory and this will give you if there are certain areas of risk those become your objectives. This is, this is the NCE capturing that we have talked about earlier. What is an NCE? NCE is a non-confirming event. Conformance to the standard, conformance to your what you have written down in your uh, procedure and manuals, if there is a violation of that, it becomes a non-conformance. Any kind of non-conformance should be noted down. Similarly, incidents. Incidents are small events like a needle stick that happens which should be noted down immediately for type of incident and this is a corrective action format that again these things are explained in the quality control module. You can look under that, but these should become if there is a certain non-conformance which is happening uh, multiple times that becomes uh, there becomes a need that there, there is a need to set it as a quality objective. Incident, multiple needle sticks that should become why is it happening? You need to put it as an objective and take some remedial action about that. So quality objectives, review it, set it, make it measurable by capturing the number of times that incident or non-conformance is acting, uh, happening and then review it. The re results should be communicated to all staff, we already talked about it and should be reviewed and revised. That is why th that how it becomes a plan, do, check, act. Where in the plan, do, check, does it happen? You have planned, you are doing and while checking, you are finding mistakes and therefore you are setting your goals set again that becomes your act part plan do check act so quality objectives become part of that PDS, pdca cycle and where in the standard do you find about quality objectives we already saw that in 4.1.2.4 uh, that we already talked about and in again you look at 4.12 you, the standard is talking about continual improvement. The laboratory shall continually improve the effectiveness of the QMS and, and to be directed at areas of highest priority based on risk assessment. So that standard is again talking about setting objectives uh, to, to improve wherever required. Look at clause 4.14. Standard is again talking about the risk management, quality indicators, uh, how you can actually improve yourself. So there are multiple areas of the standard where they are talking about, standard is talking about 
continual improvement and uh, I hope you now understand why that pyramid, the apex pyramid was misaligned and the objectives and the indicators were pushed to the right side just to show that there are multiple indicators. It is not planning of document, so this is also becoming little bit of doing document also. I am going to look at a sample quality objectives of a XYZ lab. XYZ lab is addressing clause 5.3. As you know, uh, if you look at the standard, you will see 5.3 is talking about equipment and reagents, 5.4 is talking about sample collection. So there are multiple things that the lab is addressing under 5.3, the lab is talking about both the inventory disruptions and equipment. So the lab is setting some objectives here. It is. It should be measurable. So lab says ensure zero turnaround time violation on account of inventory disruption. So evidently the lab is having some problem with inventory. So therefore the lab has set an objective there, shall, there will be no more uh, turnaround time reporting violations because there is no um, reagent or co control or whatever be the inventory problem is. Under 5.3 of equipment the lab is saying optimize equipment performance and reduce downtime. So again lab is having a uh, problem with downtime. So reduce round time but how, however there is no number given there ideally there should be a number put there. Now minimize that violation due to breakdowns. Again the turnaround time violation should be less than 1 percent of the total number of days or however they would measure the uh, turnaround time. Backup machines in all departments. So the lab has a problem with breakdown and the lab does not have backup equipment. So the lab is saying let us have backup machines in all departments. So I'm assuming the lab has set the goals for the one year. Within one year there should be backup machines. And uh, sample collection again the objectives are to reduce patient waiting time at the counter to less than 15 minutes measurable objective to ensure that the number of con con non conforming specimens should uh, taken by the phlebotomist should not exceed 1%. So there, what are the non-conformances in specimen collection? Maybe a Himalaya samples, maybe uh, mislabeled samples. There, there are many kinds of non-conformances phlebotomists can make. So they are saying it should not exceed 1%. Maintain records especially with reference to the time of collection and identification of phlebotomists. So that is another objective. So if you look at this objective, it is evident that some of the objectives you do not need to actually put a number like backup machines in all departments. It is an objective, it is more of a qualitative than a quantitative objective. So you, I hope you understand about quality objectives from this example and we will move on to the next concept which is the quality indicators. So we need to understand the, the, the relationship between quality policy objectives and indicators and their interrelationship. So the laboratory has written a quality policy in consensus in compliance with the ISO standard and however during the risk assessment or internal audit or one of those mechanisms of finding out the, the bottlenecks, the laboratory has found that there are issues. So they have set objectives say 1, 2 and 3. Let us assume objective 1 is in pre-analytics, objective 2 is in analytics and objective 3 is in post-analytics. And let us again ex uh, assume that the objective 1 in the pre-analytics is about very high number of sample rejection. So the laboratory is now setting two indicators. One could be about mislabeling. The second could be about hemolysis or the collection techniques are wrong. There are so many hemolysis. So what would the lab do? Lab will set an indicator, indicator for the mislabeled samples and the, uh, the hemolyzed samples and they would train the people and they will watch the indicator and on the performance of the indicator. And in the objective 2 uh, where in the analyticals suppose there is a problem with the analytical system and the equas violations are happening, the z scores are being going haywire or the internal controls are CVs are becoming uncontrollable. So lab will have to set an indicator regarding stabilizing the analytical system say it is an IQC as in CV or z scores for uh, for your uh, equas. So there is an object, the indicator set for the second objective also. And in the third objective, let us assume the problem is with the uh, turnaround time violation. So the laboratory sets indicators about measuring the turnaround time and measures the turnaround time so that 
it can measure the uh, the objective how the objective is being uh, followed up let's look in detail about the quality indicators we have seen in the earlier slide about all these indicators we've already talked about it suppose your lab is doing very well in your analytics your z scores are very good your cvs are very good all within acceptable ranges do you still need to set this as an objective no but do you stop monitoring those no because these will continue as indicators but they mean need not be objectives because these are all very vital parameters they have to be part of your monitoring system and the indicators will stay uh, as indicators but it, they need not be objectives sample collection NCEs needle sticks again vital parameters need to be monitored regardless of whether they are objectives or not same with equipment downtime adverse incidents stockouts stat violations all uh, prop areas where there can be potential uh, problems you s let it stay as an indicator anyway quality indicator setting is entirely your choice and NABL recommends that at least one objective be set in pre analytical sorry uh, one indicator be set in uh, pre analytical analytical and post analytical areas but the more the indicators the easier you can uh, have the monitoring of the lab done to understand more about quality indicator measurement, please refer to clause 3.19 of the standard. And it says, quality indicator is a measure of the degree to which a set of inherent characteristics fulfill requirements. Measure can be expressed, for example, as percentage yield, which is percentage with within specified requirements, percentage defects, percentage outside the specified requirements, defect per million occasions or DPMO or on the Six Sigma scale. These are mechanisms by which you can measure the quality indicators. To understand more about capturing the percentage defects, uh, uh, you can look at the quality indicator monitoring tool of Labs for Life that enables one to capture the quality indicator as percentage defects. Let us look at the relationship between quality objectives and quality indicators once more. Quality objectives need to be set at all bottlenecks needing improvement. Quality and indicator on the other hand need to be set at all areas need, which needs monitoring. And quality objectives are measured through indicators. Whereas indicators are tools for monitoring quality objectives. It's a reciprocal. And when quality objectives is achieved, it need not continue as an objective. You can uh, remove that as an objective and set new objectives, which are still areas that need improvement. Uh, whereas in a quality indicator, you have to continue monitoring the indicator even after the objective is achieved. And not all objectives need to have indicators uh, like it's an example we have planned up uh, talked about uh, having backup equipment uh, what kind of an indicator can you set there so it's a qualitative objective and you just make sure that whatever you have planned is achieved in the in the specified t time duration there is no need to set an indicator there and in the same on the same thing not all indicators need to be objectives we have descri described that it need not be a bottleneck you need to monitor an area so that you set an objective so that is those are the basic differences between objectives and indicators to summarize uh, how do you what what do you do about your uh, objectives and your uh, indicators you identify risk areas bottleneck areas define quality objectives or set and measure indicators measure the progress inform discuss review and reset so that is a cycle of improvement that you achieve through your quality objectives and indicators we'll talk about the quality manual in the next video